as can be. All good pals and jolly good company. ITV Granada Local Programming, sponsored by MotorPoint. You're in great company. Nestled in England's glorious northwest lies the town of Accrington, home to a football legend with its roots planted in the turf of the world's first football league. But mounting debt forced the club to hang up its professional boots mid-season in 1962. However, it remains emblazoned in the nation's memory, partly thanks to an 80s milk ad. Accrington Stanley, who are they? Exactly. The club's renaissance came in 2006 when they emerged from the lower league obscurity to rejoin professional football in Coca-Cola League 2. It's an absolute farce. Bollocks! Spend some money on grasses and put the manager in the cage. As the smallest and poorest club in the league, mere survival is a tall order for football minnows at Hundred Stanley. Whatever the score, when you're a Stanley fan, you are victorious. The club is run on a shoestring, surviving week to week on a wing and a pair. Fucking hell, who are these? Behind the scenes, a whole cast of seasoned professionals keeps the magic alive. You won't pay half of them with washes, would you? But they all pull together for the lure and love of Accrington Stanley. I was at Preston North End before I come here, and you were just a number. Here, you're part of a family. I've had my belly full of this place. Saturday morning, and an early start for Mick Schultz, safety officer and all-round dog's body. I arrive in the morning at nine o'clock and I start opening up, getting everything ready. I get the first aid equipment ready, open the changing rooms, and then I, I proceed all the way around the ground, opening turnstiles, putting the turnstile monitoring system on, do a sound check, and then I just general wait for the fans to arrive and uh, hopefully the day goes well and 10 to 5 comes and we've got three points. I've got about four titles, I think. Um, I'm safety officer on match days. During the week, uh, I do the lottery, lottery manager. Uh, I do the kit. The stadium manager will be to repairs around the ground and we clean the ground as well. All right, Baldy. That's me. Here you are. Good morning. Busy you. game today. Oh, I thought we should make some money today anyway. <laughs> you haven't met out all season. Yeah, you said it. Despite a night on the sauce, club chairman Eric Worley arrives like clockwork to oversee the match day preparations. A little bit delicate after a, a sportsman's dinner last night, but uh, obviously looking forward to the game. A bit rough today. Fortunately for Eric, match day morning start in traditional Accrington fashion. He's got the full moment in. Bacon, sausage, mushroom, yes, smell, smelly smelly egg. smells like it. Smelly yeah. egg. <laughs> <laughs> he texted me before, he said he don't want to, uh, the full Monty now. Not satisfied, do you tell Mrs. that like you don't have anything? I don't know you two can eat that stuff, do you mean? Bill will be coming in. He was legless last night. Does that mean I've got to give him an early morning call to get him up? Well, I'm going to be surprised if he's here. Aha, there's more than bacon butties to wash down. Match day means wash day. Rain or shine, home or away. Mick shoulders a heavy load. The wife does most of the washing for the kit, but, you know, like they always say, a woman's work's never done in it, so I end up doing half at wife's work as well. I have certain ways of putting the kit out. Shorts the same way, the socks the same way. I think every football team has the superstitions. I have the way I put the kit out. I just think it's part of Sunday now. Um, well, Saturday night, as soon as I get in, we sort it all out, socks, shorts and everything, and then it goes in for the washes. Shorts usually get about four washes. Um, they're that hard to get clean. Yeah, we're up to 33 now at the moment, squad numbers. All for the love of uh, Aki Stanley. It's a family here, everybody looks after everybody else. If I can't manage, somebody else will come and help me. You know, we, we don't say it's not my job. You do any job. If there's a brush there, you sweep up. But it's put up or shut up when it comes to dealing with the chairman. Hey, came with that steward on Jess Gates. I went to saw him about it, yeah. He said, I stopped them all coming in, and then Jess said to me, it's all right, John, they can come in. Well, it does it Jeff pay you wages? I didn't know it had happened until it came through. Fucking hell. It's 365 days a year. It doesn't finish at the end of the season. The, the thing is, we all rally around together. 
which is very rare any of us who are off sick. At the end of the day, the club's biggest headache is to keep the fans flowing through the gates. Home performances have been poor, and attendances have dwindled to around 1,200 northern souls. You know, the local sides, one's in Plymouth and the other one play tomorrow. So there's no excuse for anybody wanting a football fix to come along, you know, and watch us, but uh, it doesn't seem to be happening. Today, Stanley play host to Barnet, against whom they've never lost a game at home. How many balls are you, Nicky? It's true, I'll kill you. Hopes are high, as Accrington's well-oiled machine kicks into action. Just check nobody's got a full beard when they come through to Turnstile on concession. I'll get somebody for the bit to shut the gates and uh, everybody in. Close. Neither team taking any advantage. After Barnett Berry a second goal, Aki fans begin to drift away. Eric has nothing but gratitude for the few loyal fans that remain. Good support is there, aren't they? Watching this rubbish every week. To lose is a disaster. Time for the chairman to confront his manager. That's absolutely disgrace, that. Anybody pay money to watch that shit? Should I have the money back? Here you have it. It's fucking disgrace. I mean, I'll tell you what, and all them players that's got still got a year on the contract, absolute shite. He must have get ball away more times than I've ever seen him. Fucking. Well, he might as well have fucking not have been on. Fucking, fucking Jesus, he must be thick. He's fucking useless, John. He's fucking, he's a threat, but he's not a threat. He's a threat once every bloody Preston Guild. They're no good to you, them fucking players. They'll get you a fucking sack, I'm telling you. I like as a lad, but he's fucking no good. Just like one of them asked me for more money, eh? Who's your man the lunch? It's fucking but for, for anybody, right? Or us? For us? I've got a bloody penny on. The point is, I feel as bad as you. I mean, that's fucking not acceptable, that. That's absolute shite. I mean, I think by when they scored the second goal, I think everybody bought a bloody three or four hundred walked off. If it was a one off, you wouldn't be as, as concerned. But it's not been a one off. We must have played like that since Angelo, obviously. We have this big offer on, the best we've ever done, but you imagine 1,200 people from Accrington today who would want to buy a season ticket after watching that crap. You know, I mean, I mean that's all right, 1,200, it's, it's worse to leave. But the point is, they would say that they came last week and saw us play shit then. As the Accrington faithful leave dejected, the stadium stands forlorn and empty. The fans will return, but clubhouse landlady Hazel won't be one of them. After seven months running the club's two licensed premises, a shocked emotion has stunned her into calling time. I love working here. I love most of the staff and a few bit of the management, but I'll be sorry to leave, but I'm glad to leave. Anybody who takes over this job wants a red looking at. Hiya, Rob. Got some bad news for you. Well, Here's my notice. Right. I've heard a rumour. Yeah. Well, I'm not being treated like a piece of shit by anybody anymore. Well, why do you feel like you've been treated like, uh, like that? Different things. There's a list of grievances there. Right. You can t contact me, Union. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Hazel. I'll speak to you shortly. Yeah. Um, a bit disappointed, really, to be honest, because obviously we, um, we have problems with the Crown when she was looking after the Crown and the club, and perhaps it was a bit too much to ask her to do both, so we took the Crown off her. There's not enough of the work here to fall out. We're all, we're all a family, really. Uh, we're out it sounding too cheesy, and it's, it is upsetting when somebody isn't happy. 
sorry to leave, especially supporters. It's just one of those things. Any questions he's got, he'll have to deal directly with me uni, cos I've had my belly full of this place. thing is that every time she's come to us with a problem or a complaint, we try to do something about it, don't we? Even down to the... We had, we had, we had so many staff and we're losing 500 quid a week, which can't afford to... It's just the same, same stuff as before. Do you know what was to slip it off? Because at the end of the day, you can could, you could go on forever. Yeah, you just end up in a slanging match, don't you? Let's just say it hasn't worked out and shake can. Yeah, shake can. Just, just get keys. But it's disappointing when... I mean, we're not nasty people, are we? We're not. Mm -hmm. Oh, we speak for yourself. For Landlady Hazel, leaving the Crown means losing a home, too. A home she shared with a number of the club's younger players. I just feel sorry for anybody who moves in here. I hope they're going to like the furniture being destroyed, because that's what my furniture's been. Completely and utterly destroyed. If you look over here, they've used it as a chair. I thought people would have respect for other people's furniture, but I were wrong. So does Hazel have any advice for her successor? He's in for a rude awakening. He'll soon learn how tight Accrington Stanley are. Oh Here we are again. ITV Granada Local Programming, sponsored by Motorpoint, your great company. The champions of England and Europe take on the champions of Scotland. One massive game. It's what the Champions League is all about. It's Nakamura, Man United v Celtic on ITV1 and Arsenal on ITV4. The Champions League live, Tuesday from 6.30. Kicks for free on TV, mobile and online. No one gets anywhere in this business unless they're prepared to give 100%, 24-7. You are exceptionally talented. Just don't realise it. This is where I belong. Anything that makes me feel alive. A new series, Britannia High, Sunday 6.15, ITV1. Here we are again. ITV Granada Local Programming, sponsored by Motorpoint. You're a great company. Accrington Stanley is the smallest club in the Football League and it's forever short of brass. Today is collection day for the club's own weekly lotto draw, a task befallen to job juggling Mick Schultz. They pay £1 a week for seven lucky numbers and they're entered into a draw for £2,000 a week right down to minor prizes of £5. And then once a year it's a £25,000 prize. Um, which a lot of people say it's not about the money, they just do it because they want to give a pound at Stanley. It's an excellent fundraiser. It's uh, 52 weeks a year for us. That's the biggest thing about it, which it's one of the only sources of the income that come into the club during the close season. We've got a game on tonight, 7 o'clock kickoff, so it'll be time I've opened and closed the ground tonight. It'll be gone 10 o'clock when I get home. I saw my wife off to work last night. She works nights as a carer, and I said, I'll see you Tuesday. Uh, she accepts it as football. It's all part of loving the game. But there's a good thing about it, people are so friendly. You, you don't mind doing it. You do not mind doing it. Yeah. Mick's lottery round brings in a few thousand pounds every week. It's a vital lifeline. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? All right. Yeah, no problem. Is everybody in? Sorry? Everybody in the draw? No. Who's cancellations in on page? No, no, okay, to listen. Who's cancelled? Basically, you're losing members each week, so you've still got to be putting them on and on. Um, so as you're losing them, you've got to be looking for new ones. Is it pay only one pound? So that takes you down to 18 now? Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll do a newspaper drop, huh? Yeah. In the papers. Right, I'll see you next right. week. Thank you. Thank you. See ya. Bye. Bye. The club is forever hatching new ways to market the team. General Manager Dave O'Neill has been looking for a plucky volunteer to provide a little extra help on the wing. He's found a reluctant volunteer in groundsman Gary Lewis to step into the shoes of club mascot Frazier the Eagle. That is an improvement, Gary. How's that? Is that okay? It's alright. Is this somewhere scary? It's 
somewhere have a little a, thing on your head, is no, there? There's a, mesh, there's a mesh there that he sees out of. You've got to tilt your head back. Yeah. Well, then you can see. You can't see where you're going, though. Well, I'm not holding your hand. Yeah, if you tilt your head back, you can see out the mesh. Yeah, that's why you always look. Said, isn't it? That's why you've got to walk backwards, like you're full of a, a load of ale and you think they're spilling it. You're not allowed to show your hands either. Show us what you're going to do, it kids. Then. Oh, what you're going to do? Interact. Who are you? This little lad. I'll go. I'll walk on with you. <laughs> hey, that's it. Hey. Yeah. Right. All right. That'll do. Is it me, Dad? Would you be up for like a mascot race? Any time. Sword fight. Anything. Jousting. It'd be good that, wouldn't it? Kids would like that. Bare knuckles. Well, they actually have a national one down at Upton in race course, don't they? Yeah, but we couldn't send him to a national one, could we? <laughs> <laughs> what I want you to do is create an eagle dance. On the move. You know, like um, Bolton, Bolton the lion there as a, a. Yeah. But you should have a routine that you go through to g the, g the fans up. Yeah. Yeah. Have an eagle, have an eagle. Yeah. Okay. Right, we'll go with that then, Gary. But getting out of character doesn't appear to come naturally. Be careful. Well, don't worry about me, Dave. Not much about you, we can replace you. Another bitter match day morning, another bitter northern derby. Our Aki fans are well wrapped up for a charity walk to local rivals Rochdale. Or as we call them in Aki, Rochdale. It's seven o'clock at uh, Accrington Stanley in the car park and uh, we've, uh, we're an assemble of, uh, of like-minded souls that have decided to, uh, to walk to, uh, to Rochdale. It's nothing to do with uh, global warming. We're hoping to build a school in Nepal. But uh, as you can see, we've already got 40 people who have, have turned up on what is a very, very cold March uh, morning in, uh, in Accrington. And uh, more turning up as we speak, which is uh, making my smile grow. Basically, we the lads who stand behind the goal. We what everyone calls the ultras um, behind the goal, and we're the ones who go to the away games, the home games. They're the ones who make the flags behind the goals. This is what this club's all about. They're absolutely 100% uh, genuine people, making the atmosphere better for people to turn up. The young lads that have started turning up in the last couple of years, they're fed up of having uh, corporate football pushed down the throat. They get that having to sit down, not being part, tell, told where you're going to be sitting. Here you turn up, you're part of you're part of something bigger. You can sing and shout and act daft behind goals when we score, which is, you know, thankfully it has turned out to be more than it was earlier on in the season. And it really is um, a sense of belonging together. You know, all these people here have all come out, got up early on a Sunday morning to walk all the way to Rochdale. It's not just 10 or 20 people, there must be 50, 60 people here. And I think it's good that it's not being done for the football club, it's being done for a, for a charity. And it just it, it shows really, football fans get a lot of bad press. It seems to be every, every week, week in, week out, and this is an example of the good that football can do, really. It's 15 miles, which doesn't sound like a lot, but we're going over some, uh, some moorland. Uh, which um, Wuthering Heights springs to mind, uh, and with the blust that we've, blustery breeze that we've got down here, by the time we get up on Moor today, you won't put a kite up, let's put it that way. Right, folks, first off, thank you very, 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 very much for coming. One voice, please. One voice for just 10 seconds, and you can set off. I know you're all keen and eager. The first part of the route takes us straight through Accrington, up Manchester Road, and then we're probably going to be having a stop around Rising Bridge. Lucy and Liz will be there with the water at Rising Bridge. Or Mac McDonald's, if, if you wish. <laughs> Pub's not open for those of us older than 15. Um, it's not just Saturday, it, it's everything in between. Here you turn up, you're part of something bigger, these people do anything for you, and if you ask them, they'll, they'll turn out. And the people here are the best football people in the whole of the world, not just the country, the world. Oh, to be in Lancashire, now that March is in the air. And whoever wakes in Lancashire sees some morning unaware. They've made it, but will their success be repeated on the fields of conflict?
have stolen the lead. But Rochda seemed to want it back. Chairman is not amused. Well, defiant in defeat, it seems nothing can dampen the spirits of Aki's Ultras. Superb effort today, lads, every one of you. Hey, take them tins in pub and get them rattled. Still smiling, you see, because whatever the score, when you're a Stanley fan, you are victorious. And uh, when you've done your bit to make the world a little bit of a better place, um, you can't help but smile, can you? If you notice, we're not the, the sveltest of chaps, so the challenge is a bit more for us. But um, once we've got the school med, uh, the, the money on top of that will be going to the Aspire Fund in Accrington. There's a new addition to the Aki family, and in keeping with the spirit of the club, Chief Exec Rob Hayes has made his daughter Charlotte's christening an open invite. We're back here on the work, sir. So obviously, we all, we all work together. And, uh... Obviously a few friends or a few supporters will come in and uh, it should be a nice day, apart from the weather of course, which is just accurate to weather for you. I've done it all myself, as usual. But Rob sorted the food out. It's on. Last minute, Rob. It's all ready though, I think. I hope. Back at the Crown, today is proving more than a baptism of fire for new landlords Mo and partner Tracy. The chief exec invited 100 people. You never know we Rob. It could be 150, it could be 50. Tracy doing a buffet, so we're expecting a busy day today. And with only a couple of days' notice, the preparations took Tracy by surprise. He said he told me when we had a meeting with him, but I can't remember him telling me, but he said he did anyway. I have other things to do as well, you see, so it has put me under pressure a bit. Ever committed to the cause? Mix, the first one back to the crown to wet the baby's head. Football game's 90 minutes long, though the priest did. He didn't do uh, half time with 15 minutes like we always get in a football game. I think it'd have been better with uh, an half time. We could have had a break and gone out for a wee. While Accrington may lack divine inspiration on the pitch, they can still count their blessings that at home it's all one big happy family. I get invited to the weddings, and birthday parties, engagements. I was at Preston North End before I come here, and you were just a number. Here you're part of a family. And the Crown's former landlady has found a new home in the local Conservative Club. I gave me notice in at Accrington Stanley on the 8th of April to ask to leave the premises, which I did. Came down here, started work here that night and got given key straight away. <laughs> and I've been smiling ever since. I feel brilliant feel brilliant and customers are so sweet, bless them, and they all love me to bits as well.